Hi, Crystal Bashara here. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how to make a dynamic range of gray using three colors that my students for the last 25 years have deemed as crystal gray. And it's sort of my secret weapon in creating interesting and uh, visually stimulating grays on my paper without having to resort to buying tubes of gray, which can have a tendency to dry a little flat and a little dull. In today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you the difference between mixing color on your palette and mixing color right directly on your paper. So to mix color, I like using a synthetic stiff brush. I'm using my Filbert here, which is available through my website under brushes. It's kind of slick. The bristles are as stiff as a hog's hair brush, but because they're synthetic, they don't absorb the watercolor paint. And at the same time, it's rigid enough that I can actually scoop up quite a lot of pigment from the wells. So the first thing I do, I've already sprayed this so the paints are a little bit tacky, but I'm gonna spray it again. And the surface of the palette is uh, dry. So there's my Prussian blue. And of course I always rinse my brush every time I change color. And at this point, I don't have to worry about wiping my brush off. I'm just picking up my second color, which is violet. And this is a dioxazine violet, so it's really quite rich. It's a beautiful and consistent violet. It's not too red and it's not too blue. And then the third color in this triad is burnt umber. There it is there. So I already have a little bit of burnt umber on my brush. What I'm gonna do first is make that brown gray. So the burnt umber will be the dominant in this family. So I'll put the burnt umber out first. Now I will blot my brush. I'll pick a little bit of violet up and put that into the pool where I have my burnt umber. And then I'm gonna pick a little bit of the Prussian blue up. So that right now is kind of um, a blue gray. So that means I just need a little bit more burnt umber. Burnt umber is the weakest of all of these um, three colors. So there we go, that's beautiful. So here's the color mixed on the palette. It's consistent, I mix it up really, really well. And I'm gonna show you on the paper. So this is our brown gray. So there it is on the surface of the paper. And I'm gonna water it out so you can see its range. So you can see it's, it's fairly warm. It's still a gray, and that's what I'm looking for, but it's on the warm side. So now I'm going to make another gray, but it will be a violet dominant gray. So I'm gonna put the violet out first. I'm going to add the burnt umber to it. I can grab from here or I can grab from the well because this is pretty weak. I'm just actually going to grab from the well and Prussian. So that's a little on the bluish side. So I'm going to go back to my violet, pick up more of that because I definitely want it to read as violet, gray, so that's pretty nice. I'll show you here on the paper. So there it is in its pure form, and now I'm gonna water it out. I'll water it out a little bit more so you can see what it looks like diluted. And now we're gonna make a blue dominant gray. So I'll put the Prussian blue out first. a little bit of violet. And a little bit of burnt umber. So here it is 
on the paper and now I'm going to water it out. So again, those three colors, Prussian blue, violet, and burnt umber. And the three of them together make this beautiful range of grays that are a lot more dynamic and interesting and they don't dry flat like some of the tube grays that you end up with. Even between these there would be an existing gray as well so not only do you have the range in terms of value from dark to medium to light but of course in between each pool mixture you can have variations by just simply changing the ratio of pigment. So that's how you mix color in your palette. Now I'm going to show you the same grays but mixing on the surface of the paper. So I'm going to be mixing color right on the surface of the paper rather than in the palette. So I'm going to start with the burnt umber. And create my first burnt umber um, brown based gray. So there's the burnt umber. I rinse my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of violet. Remember violet is a very, very dominant color. I'm going to just float that in and then I'm going to add the Prussian blue and I'm doing this all before this paint has a chance to dry. So there all three colors are in. I'm just going to stir it up a little bit, not too, too much, but this way you can really see the full range and that makes a really gorgeous and dynamic color because the different hues are still visible. If I keep stirring it up, I will end up with a hue that looks a lot like this, but I'm going to leave it kind of um, deconstructed like this so that it maintains its range of color. Both are correct, both are okay, it just depends on what you want. I'll show you the violet based gray. So taking the pure dioxazine violet, depositing a little bit of the burnt umber in here, and then a teeny tiny amount of Prussian blue. Now, obviously when you're mixing on the paper, it's a little trickier because you don't have a lot of control over um, how much of each color you're putting on. So it's difficult to guess exactly what you need inside your brush. So that's the other disadvantage. But at the same time, you might end up with a more serendipitous and uh, exciting result. So again, you can see a little bit of a range, some of the, the brown and the Prussian kind of peeking through. Finally, I will end with my Prussian biased gray. So I'm going to start with a good pool of Prussian. I'm going to add a little bit of violet and then a tiny bit of that burnt umber color. And again, depending on how much I stir this up, I'll end up with either um, a more uniform result if I keep stirring and stirring, but what I'm looking for here is a more interesting and um, dynamic shift in color here. So I don't want to lose that beautiful telltale <laughs> pool of color that tells me kind of, oh, there, she put some brown in there, she put some violet in there. So here we have an example of the difference between mixing color on the paper versus mixing color in the palette. The end result when you mix on the palette is a more uniform and consistent and predictable result because you can test and see the full result in your palette. Whereas when you mix on the paper, yes, it's more dynamic and there's more of a range and visually it's certainly more interesting than these flatter colors but it all depends on what you're looking for. So again within each one of these mixtures there is a subtle range so you can have a complete 
shift from cool to warm in one painting even. And I use these color combinations for shadows on everything from metal to trees to cement. I've even used it in portraits and I just find it a really satisfying combination. I hope this video was helpful to you. Experiment with your grays. I think it's one of the most important colors to um, play around with because the last thing you want to do is have a gray that kind of sucks the life out of your painting.